you know, a drop in tempo from both teams. And it could just be a case of the two teams are trying to suss each other out. It's not that fast-paced, you know, blittering uh, type of game we're witnessing. A lot more controlled. I think you're spot on, lady. I think you're spot on. I mean, both teams are coming in. They haven't, they haven't played each other in a while. And they've, even though they've seen each other playing, it's a different case when you're actually on the court with each other. And I think it's just seeing what is exactly uh, each other has and, and will bring to the game. I'm enjoying, so you can see Jamaica settling a bit. Janiel is becoming a bigger target. I think she's come out a little high just to help her, her attack. And that's just a true leader that she is. Seeing the struggle and coming to help. Brilliant. Van der Berg steals it on the transfer line. It's going to be crucial for the Spa Proches to be able to play both ways here. Attack and defense. And that results in a goal. Just take a look at that. Excellent steal. Two hands from Van der Berg. Yeah, she's fearless and uh, only making a name of herself on the international arena just recently. But you can see the confidence that oozes uh, from Elmeray van der Berg as the spot approaches. Reduce that margin. He has another turnover. The momentum swinging in favor of the spot approaches. Oh, good patience and lands safely into the hands of Portgitter. Can the small Proteas equalize? Oh, oh. brilliant from Portgitter chasing that ball down, saving it and sinking it. And what Kanisa Chawan is doing so well, the offloads to Portgitter. She doesn't hesitate, she lets that ball go quickly. Yeah, so uh, Natanya Wilson getting a talking to there from the umpire. She's going to have to adapt. I think the umpire was clarifying and explaining to Natanya that she's holding the goal attack. She, she needs to tidy it up because you really don't want to get cautioned or warned in a game like this. Oh, look at this defensive pressure around the circle's edge from the Spa Proteas. Beckford is doing a brilliant job to take that responsibility in the shooting circle. There's a double mark, a sandwich on Fowler. She's stepping up. An unforced error here then from the Spa Proteas. They're going to be careful. They don't want to give free ball to the Sunshine Girls. Oh, got to tell you, I'm so impressed by Fowler. Well, not for that. But just how she defends her space in that circle. Availing herself for the attackers when there's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And this time around, Mawenu picking it up, denying her access. It was a job well done. These are the things you don't want to see, Simi. You want to stay disciplined. Jamaica, there's no need to be forcing the ball from the centre third. Clearly, they've been working the ball down to Fowler. Yes, if she's open, you release, but clearly that didn't happen. And those are the balls that will fall short. So discipline has to be the name of the game. 100% agree with you, Simone Forbes. Look at that, the pressure from Pumza Maweni. Off the hand of Fowler, it goes off court. But what the small coaches are doing well, they're preventing the Sunshine Girls from getting into that goal third for the second phase. Hence the pressure to offload that ball from range to Fowler. I think Lenise is doing an excellent job getting those rebounds. This is the second rebound she's getting off. Uh, Latanya and Shamira, two of the best defenders in the world. So she's doing a very, very good job as, in, as ensuring that she puts herself in a rebounding position. Yeah, she is uh, undoubtedly doing a fantastic job, heavily strapped on the knees, but uh, playing like somebody, you know, who wants a victory for the team, putting it out there and uh, putting a body on the line. 
And also the discipline on attack for me from the spot approaches. They're keeping that ball flat. They're getting into the landing on the circle's edge and then placing it in the perfect space for Borghitter and Van der Berg. Just uh, four minutes then remaining uh, to the end of the quarter. 11 goals apiece. Oh, that's unfortunate there. Chawai there cornered to the other side of the circle. And the turnover opportunity then for the Sunshine Girls. Yeah, there's that uh, long range pass that you're talking about earlier on, Simone, saying that, you know, it's not necessary at this stage. Rather play yourself right to the top of the circle, as we see from Williams on wing attack. And she's been doing an, an incredible job with those feeds in the last two games. Uh, she's had most feeds, so, and even in this game, you see her a little short, but again, this is just, we just have a score of 11 11. Oh, well, 12 11 to Jamaica. We're expecting those numbers to grow. Uh, exponentially but Zanelle I want to just touch on the fact that it's 11-11 and remember your prediction let's see what happens huh yeah I will not announce it though on live television right, but you know where my center. money is absolutely no time it's in the senators it is I'm going to withdraw and not comment on that term just uh, rather let uh, the match pan out because I'll tell you this uh, both teams are quite impressive this evening we knew that it was going to go right down to the wire and that's precisely what we're seeing in uh, this uh, first quarter performance. No goal, disallowed. Oh my goodness, that's unbelievable there. Penalty Come called back, against Vandenberg. But Simi, we've, we've been seeing quite a bit of those calls over the last two days of the goal attacks and the goal shooters pushing off the defenders. And, and, and as a player, you want to... You want to recognize that, that these umpires are looking closely at these things and adjust your game. And what is it, Simone, about it? Because, I mean, you having been a goal attack as well, and a sensational one, I may add. What is it, uh, you know, that uh, we're seeing a lot of shooters being called out for that contact? I think, I mean, we're all fight they're all fighting for position. The defenders are trying to prevent you, and you're trying to secure the best position. So during all of that, and some of us are more blessed than others, so you know, you know what, what the outcome of that could be. All time blood. Oh man, just looking. Oh, there's, seems like there's blood. Carla Pretorius. Center. She's going to have to quickly come off, get cleaned up. There's going to be a change yeah. though. Looks like Shadeen van der Merwe then will make her way. Oh, Nicholas Smith comes in. Coach Norma Plummer bringing in height in that shooting circle of Jamaica. Smith then will take the goal defense position while Pretorius just gets cleaned up another youngster who is definitely making herself a name for herself on the international arena Nicola Smith has worked tirelessly to earn her spot in uh, the team and uh, really has just been outstanding and like you said Zanelle you know Norma Plum has options in that uh, defensive circle and this is a good thing with these teams, uh, Simi. All four of the top teams you see moving, making, doing rotations, making different combinations. And so Norma, having been able to put this goal defense on uh, in place of Carla, clearly we see South Africa is here with a starting 12, like Jamaica. 100%, very smart coaches, Coach Norma Plummer. She knows how to put plans together to be able to counter the top teams. In 2019, the Spa approach has lost by two goals to Australia. So this team has really grown from strength to strength. Obstruction, goalkeeper. I think Pumza is doing a very good job forcing Jamaica to make a second pass in the circle, forcing Janiel high. And I think if you can do that, then you will be able or might be able to get be more successful and have her comfortable in her in her regular position. Yes, at the moment, uh, Spot Protest uh, trying to move down court to sink one more goal, but unfortunately not able to do so with the clock ticking away. So it is uh, Jamaica's throw in, but uh, there goes the buzzer. 
signaling the end of the first 15 minutes of action. And the Sunshine Girls are taking the lead at the end of the first quarter. So there you have it. It is the Sunshine Girls with the 16 goals versus the Spa Proteas 12 at the end of the first quarter. Great uh, start from uh, both teams, taking it easy there, slowing the tempo down a notch, just trying to suss each other out, but sure the Sunshine fan, Sunshine Girls will be pleased with closing things up with a four goal lead at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> with Jamaica leading by four goals. Nana is Carla and Janelle steps into the defender, her signature move, and she sinks them. Contact on the fence, inside. Yep, safely does it. 
playing herself uh, right under the goalpost. Lenise uh, Portgitter. We got a glimpse of uh, the other three reserves in uh, this uh, 15 player squad of the spot approaches. So, I mean, this is impressive defensive work from the spa approaches. I mean, they're forcing Jamaica to recycle that ball. They're not allowing them to get into that goal third. Welcome, assistant coach Sean Murdoch. Uh, after seeing the first quarter, what are some of the things that you, we're expecting to see the Jamaicans uh, come out here and do in the second quarter? Yeah, Simone, thank you. We expected this start from South Africa. Uh, we just told our players that we need to have more than one option to the ball. I think right now we're just going on solar options to the ball and we need to have more than one option to the ball. Uh, I think defensively we're, 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 we're in it. It's just that we need to be more fluent on attack. So can we look forward to a Jamaica win? Absolutely, that's what we're aiming for. We know it's not going to be easy South Africa because they're a quality team and they're showing that now. And they have a good depth in their squad. Um, so we expect this kind of fight and of course, of course they have the home court as well. So we just have to make sure that we're doing the basics right to get this win today. Thank you. Assistant coach Sean Murdoch. Thank you. Simone, I need to remind you to slow it down there. Hey, the match is not done. It's not done by a long shot. Oh, absolutely not. I just wanted to know what he thought. <laughs> That's all. I didn't say I thought they were going to win. I don't imagine he would have said, no, we're not planning on winning this one, Simone. No, but you know what? Whether they finish first or second, or South Africa finishes first or second, it really don't, doesn't matter in the second stage. But I know it's a bragging rights game, and I mean, it's in South Africa. You really want to be the number one team moving forward. But yeah. Yeah, it is a valid point uh, because uh, the top three teams in each pool will then um, go oh, on into the back. second uh, stage and uh, form a new group to, you know, just making things a little bit difficult so that when you get the gold medal in the end, it was well worth the effort. Oh, it's good work from the bar approaches. They're allowing first phase to happen, but second phase, it's not happening for Jamaica. There's tight defense from the spa approaches, forcing Jamaica to play that ball in the midcourt. Oh, the quick offload. Dixon, Rochester to find Fowler under the post. Yeah, there needs to be pressure earlier on from the spa approaches. They did it in uh, previous uh, passages of play we just need to continue chipping away at that yeah and the interchange now between Port Hitter and, Fa and <laughs> Van der Berg Van der Berg positioning as a goal shooter and Port Hitter moving out it's the leadership in the circle for me ladies with Lenise you can see that she's in charge of that circle and whenever things are not going right she's directing the play and she's just encouraging Vanderberg and sharing with her how is it that she expects her uh, to move yeah well now we're spotting one of the spot pro tier player shoot well shooters Nicole Dalliard up on her feet behind the spot pro tier's bench could that be signaling a possible substitution of Zanele yeah, well, she's got the bib. She's got the girl attack bib on. Uh, maybe Coach Norma Plummer is going to roll in this change. Uh, she's going to be obviously looking for some ability in that shooting circle. Talia, quite a creative player. Very dynamic. And I think we'd also want to see how the combination of Borges and Talia can work. Still early days in this competition you need to have more than one option and you need to challenge and test your combinations and this is a good game try and see how the Taliat and Borghi the combination can work and there's the time being called by the Spark Pro Tiers Elmere van der Berg and the crowd erupting at the introduction of Taliat we know what she brings to the table it's the quick hands fast paced and accuracy as well from Taliart. And you heard how the crowd erupted when she came on, Nicole Taliart. She's really loved by the South Africans. Beckford for shot makes a count. 
Oh, for me, she's so composed. Everybody talks about Fowler, but Beckford oh, is such a critical Beckford. part of the shooting circle of Jamaica. The chemistry between the two shooters. Contact on the fence right here. She's pushing. No. She's definitely not a shooter you can leave unmarked. She really backs herself from range as well. Yeah, I think South Africa, their defensive unit, is giving Jamaica something to talk about. I think Zanella mentioned uh, the second phase, the second stage, and Jamaica is having a challenge getting the ball in that stage. We see here Shanice and Khadija, who has an excellent, great chemistry. They've been coming through the, the under-21 to seniors, so we know they can do that, but South Africa is not allowing them to have their day. Yeah, a bit of a delayed attempt there oh, from uh, Dixon Rochester. <laughs> so the pressure is mounting in the shooting circle of the Spa Proteus. Wilson getting a hand in. But look at that offering from Port Gita right on the baseline. 100% 13 from 13. Lenise is having the, the time of her life. Oh, they're playing with so much confidence now on the attack. Jamaica, they're letting that ball go. Ball speed, there's variation on the attack. The bench is asking the stands to get involved. The Jamaican supporters in the stands. Romelda Aiken George on her feet calling the Jamaicans in the stands to get involved in the game. Oh, Clearly. listen, they can try. <laughs> but uh, when uh, the South African fans uh, start erupting in song, oh, yeah. we sometimes struggle, you know, just hearing ourselves on this side. That contact being drawn then from Nicole Talyat. Sterling falling hard. Oh, Somi gets a hand to it. Brilliant pickup from Talyat. Crowd wasn't happy with that contact call from Taliat, but they've done well to turn this ball back to Spa Proteus. This is the thing for me, Zanele. Um, Somi has been quiet and uh, intentionally so, because the Sunshine Girls would have already, you know, studied her, known what to expect. But what's critical is that she's making the right moves at the right times. As uh, we take a look then at that pickup from Taliat following the deflection of form from Somi. The Sands are not liking something now, her ladies. I think they think their tackles or Shanice Beckford is contacting, but that's the physicality of the game. I mean, Carla is not letting up and neither is Shanice. And this is what we like to see, ladies, the excitement. The physicality, the intensity, <laughs> we live for this. And that's exactly what it is. They play within the rules. It's body on body, but it's not, you know, intentional and aggressive. And at, if you want to play at this level, you've got to be able to take the hits. Shamara and Liniz would have been teammates at the Thunderbirds. So I'm sure they're familiar with, you know, each other's style. So it should be interesting to see. Uh, where we are, where they are. Uh, exceptional intercept from Michelle Taliat. She's stepped on court and she's just grabbing this opportunity. She's really creating something different there on court. Oh, doing well to back it. Look at that. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's been uh, brilliant witnessing the attackers of the spot protests getting involved on the defensive side of things and creating opportunities for themselves and this is the thing about playing these youngsters as an the unknowns they haven't been studied they haven't been you know analyzed to death and uh, some of these teams don't know them as yet in terms of what they offer all oh, the pressure is paying off and the spectators are loving it, ladies. And this is what this defense, they're relentless. They're not letting up. They're forcing the Jamaicans to make unforced errors and not being able to come through the middle. And that's really what you want. 
Jamaicans, the attackers, won't be happy, but they have to work, they have to work the ball through. If it's not there, don't force it. And that's what they're doing and making these turnovers. Not taking away from the South African defenders because they are doing an excellent job to force these turnovers. And also they're controlling the tempo of the spa proteas on the attack down court. At times they go down with pace, at times they slow it down. Oh, look at that, he's in Crystal, extremely happy, cheering her team on from the side. Yeah, this is a good throw back of the margin from the spa proteas. Only five goals in it, and look at that, opening that goal shooting third as wide as possible to create opportunity and fantastic finish from Port Schlitter. They're staying within reach, the spa approaches. They trail by four. Three and a half minutes left of this quarter. Certainly the introduction of Talia has really been the difference. How she's been available, working on attack, converting goals, but also applying the pressure from a defensive perspective. Oh, good finish from Fowler. Taking a step closer to the goalpost. She's got a bit of a basketball, you know, based uh, shot, but it works for her. And it's very, you know, rare that we see her moving around in that uh, circle. It does work in the end. And it's good pressure around the circle's edge from the Sunshine Girls. Couldn't penetrate the goal shooting circle. The spa approaches, losing that ball. Look at this, five players in that uh, mid third from the spot protest. Putting an incredible amount of pressure on the Sunshine Girls. We have to recycle that ball. Replay, reposition themselves to break through the goal shooting third. I don't think that's the best option to leave Beckford unattended. But you see, you have to pick one. So Janil is there for an easy handoff, and so you have to decide as a defender. And I think Kums and uh, Carla are doing an excellent job enforcing Shanice because, in their minds, I believe they think it's easier to get a rebound from Shanice than it is to get one from Janil. So for Shanice to take the shot, hoping for a miss shot and for them to get the rebound. But unfortunately, Beckford is shooting right under the post, so maybe they can set up that. Um that sandwich on foul and in the moment she steps into the circle sort of play a tease creating the over ball and then attempt to intercept that one but you can't just let her get in there unmarked under no pressure especially if she's going to land right under the post so just less than 90 seconds to the halfway mark Portgitter looking to play herself closer Uh, with um, Shamira and, and Latanya is doing a very good job in the circle, preventing that pass inside. So the, out, the outlet pa defender, center wing defense, you want to make sure that you give, you give the three feet, take up the distance, because then you break that momentum that those two defenders would have been creating. Yeah, close one there for the spot protest, but great pickup from Italia, who makes it count in the end, and the fans appreciating the competitive play that we're seeing from the spot approaches only six goals difference I've got to tell you you know Fowler makes it look so easy and she's not about the flair you know and theatrics she just plays herself right under the boat goal post and sinks the means with uh, a lot of ease and confidence Yeah, Daliert is under the whip in that uh, shooting circle, but she's holding her own. And more importantly, she's keeping uh, the goal scoreboard ticking upwards. As uh, we do reach the end of the second quarter. 32-26 is where things stand at the halfway mark. So uh, there you have it. Uh, 32 goals for the Sunshine Girls. They're up by six at halfway.
So uh, really this uh, is precisely what you anticipated in this uh, Jamaica Spot Pro Tears encounter and uh, fans are really being treated to some world-class netball. So Vanessa is courtside at the moment. Uh, let's hear from her and uh, who she has on her side. Joined by the comeback kid, Lenise Potgieter. How does it feel being back on court? Oh my goodness, it's amazing. It's bloody hard, man. Um, Jamaicans always bring it out on court, but you know what? I think we're giving them a go and looking forward to the second half. Yeah, all of us are, especially the crowd. How amazing. My goodness, I need to close my ears, but I love it at the same time. So our crowd is amazing. Good luck. Thank you. Now, Latanya Wilson, goal defense for Jamaica. You started off playing against quite a taller goal attack and now a bit more sharper, shorter, more elusive goal attack. How do you adapt? I think more my ability now is to actually contest the lateral ball instead of the eyeballs. So it's more of just knowing that this quarter is not about going eye, but more going for those lateral balls. Good luck for the rest. Oh, thank you.
that about her what do you say about her right now Alsha what are we looking at when we kind of look at what we could possibly see towards the end of the game yeah I know it's tough you know because where do you cover you cover Fowler on a double and then you leave leave the guard exactly, exactly. Yeah. She just yeah. I saw um, that so I think uh, Punza and Carla is doing a great job mm. the, the speed that that ball goes into that circle and it's it's very high and it's very flat yeah. it's so difficult for a defender to get underneath yeah. So the 50-50 game at the moment is working for us. We should just keep it up and don't underestimate the work that Jontai is doing on wing defence. Mm. That those arms, she's working that wing attack all over the show. They're very wide. And I think we're doing a good job on, on the fence. Yeah, and when I talk about attack, right? Yes. Lenise Potchiter. We're seeing her come out for the first time in the for World Cup. And I even see her trending on social media at the yes. moment because everybody's like, our goal shooter is gold. What do you say about her game so far, Chino? Yes, our golden girl is looking amazing. Mm. She's creating the movement, opening the circles. Um, doesn't matter which goal attack she's playing with, she's complimenting them really well. Yeah. Um, I'm loving to see her rebound. She's taking those rebounds like a champion that she is. So on our attack, I think um, more importantly, if we look at our wing attack and center, they're a bit too wide right now. Mm. But as soon as we can penetrate trade that middle, um, land circle edge, get those feet into Lenise, I think we're good to go. And she has a 100% shoot rate at the moment, which is Amazing. incredible. That's what exactly. we need. That's right? What we need. But I want to ask you, Alsha, when we talk about us as South Africa in terms of our defence, you did speak about the ladies being very strong. Would you make any changes for the second half of the game? No, I won't. I was at one stage uh, contemplating maybe switching Bongi and Casey. I thought she was struggling somewhat, mm. uh, but she came to her own right here at the end. So I would leave it as it is now. You know, we're in it. It seems like we found it some rhythm. We came back from, from a 10 goal deficit, so we, yeah. we managed to bring back four. So I, I won't change them now. The change was made on, on, on Talyar, mm. and I think we should settle down with, with this seven now. So we are going to find out soon enough what is going to happen. Ladies, I'm going to tell you to think about your predictions because I want to hear them before we head on into the second half of the game. But you stick around. It is South Africa versus Jamaica. And the third game for the Spa Pro is in the 2023 Netball World Cup coming to you live on SABC2 from the Mother City Cape Town. Do not go anywhere. Otherwise, you'd be missing out on some really good netball. Stick around.
the penalties and contact and uh, or rather Jamaica and South Africa were just a little bit more I actually would have thought that things would have been a bit different but it seems like we're on par I, I do believe that we need to go back to the game let's see how it plays out so we get to into the third quarter action with the sunshine goals pretty much uh, picking up from where they left off in the first half Just seeing a positional change from the Sunshine girls. Looks like Wilson then goes to the wing defence position with Ward on goal defence. Yeah, and this is a combination that they, the coach has been looking at over the last two days. And of course, we know both these players play goal defence and wing defence. Those are the two positions. So Jamaica will be looking to see which which combination works when. So I'm happy to see this switch. Just, just I think Jody and Ward has a quick, quick off the ball movement and quick run through. So I think that is what Connie's looking for, especially with Nicole doing such an excellent job for South Africa. Oh, just over cooking it. Taliat needs to exercise patience there. And then on the side of the spa approach is quite an interesting one. I was wondering what ace Coach Norma Plummer has up his sleeve. Pretorius moves to wing defence. Something different. We haven't seen this combination. In, I mean, I've never seen Kadla on wing defence for the Spa Proteus. And Nicholas Smith then takes the goal defence position. And I'm sure it must be driven by the fact that uh, Khadija Williams has been dominant up front. It's a caution. Any repeat will lead to a warning. Welcome, Coach Plummer. Uh, just a quick quick question. I mean, after seeing that performance in the first half of South Africa, what were some of the instructions uh, that we that you would have given to the ladies leading into the second half? We needed to keep working the hands on, but get the cuts and drives. Sometimes they're a bit hesitant. After all, we are playing the silver medalists. Absolutely, <laughs> and your <laughs> girls are looking amazing. Thanks, Coach Plummer. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, Coach Norma Plummer saying, you know, they've got to be confident in taking those cuts and drives. Uh, they are playing the silver medalist from the Commonwealth Games. I think she left that part off. I think Australia wouldn't like <laughs> that comment about just silver medalist. Yeah, I was also trying to wreck my brain uh, to figure out exactly what she was making reference to because we know that the Sunshine Girls' uh, highest, you know, result has been a bronze medal at a World Cup. So they are coming out here to improve on that. And uh, looking by at the caliber of players that you would know too well, Simone, they really, you know, one of the teams that has been talked about the most in terms of uh, potentially you know making it all the way uh, to the top two but they've still got to work through this encounter against the spa proteas uh, first and foremost absolutely the jamaicans have uh, a wealth of experience through the court i mean they have some of the top players who play in australia and so it's a lot of talk about the, J the jamaicans possibly being uh, uh winning the, the world championship but the game is not one on paper it's one on the court and the first step or stop to possibly that happening is getting over or getting over this game and moving on tomorrow agree with you 100 percent simone it is about the journey uh, teams shouldn't be outcome based it should go through the process and the first process for Jamaica is to win this game against the Spa Proteus. Yeah, the crowd is not happy with the calls, but the Jamaican bench is extremely happy. They're up on their feet. Oh, Carla Pretorius. Does that give you a level of comfort on that wing defense position? She's a smart player. She's creative. She is so intelligent. Look at that, the pressure of her arms. You know, she's really trying to, you know, break the line of sight and close the vision, putting that pressure over the, the passer. Ladies, in space of two minutes, there's been five turnovers. South Africa losing the ball three times, Jamaica twice. These 
unforced errors you really don't want to see when you get to playing in the next stage and in the semi-final round these uh, turnovers can be extremely costly and that I mean if you want to be world number one you, you you have to ensure that you correct these errors moving forward yeah Zanelli, that's something that you also you know echo quite a lot in terms of maintaining a low error rate because come crunch time those are the things that matter at the moment uh, we're seeing a 12 goal difference up in favor of uh, Jamaica just 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter what's changed what perhaps do the spa proteas and need to do better you know there were instances where we thought that they are reducing the margin they are yet to score in this uh, third quarter we've seen five minutes of play and did not a single goal from the spot protest so far. I think this substitution between Jody and Ward and Latanya Wilson is paying dividends. Uh, Jody and appears to be a much closer onto the goal attack, denying her access to the ball and into the circle and forcing the turnover. So I think this change, Coach Connie Francis beside me on her feet, along with the Jamaican bench, are clearly happy to see what is happening here in this third quarter. And what Jamaica is doing well defensively is that they're forcing the impatience from the spa approaches. Approaches are looking for an easy way out. They still need to play the ball down court and land on the circle's edge. And it's good work there from Pumza Maweni turning that ball in favor of the spa approaches. But then the discipline to take it down court and make sure that they convert. And what I enjoyed there about Pumza as well is the fact that she's forcing Fowler to the one side of the court. So not giving her that full reign of moving as she pleases. But look at that Sterling returning the favor. Oh, oh that's quite interesting there. Yes, yeah, so uh, Latanya stretched for the ball. And just a little nudge in the back there by, by Bungi. But, 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 but again, we're not the umpires. So, and we don't have the whistle, but it just looks as if that's what the call is uh, against the wing attack. Yep, yeah, yeah. and the South African fans are not appreciating that at all. But uh, the umpire is much closer to the action. So at the moment, if we just take a score, a quarter breakdown, it's eight goals, all in favor of the Sunshine Girls in the third quarter. Six and a half minutes of play. Well, make that nine, but six and a half minutes of play, and uh, the Spa Proteas are yet to sink a goal in this third quarter. Could we see a substitution? I mean, look at that. The last ten goals, nine consecutive goals in favor of the Sunshine Girls. Sensational performance here from the Sunshine Girls. They've taken up a notch. They've changed the tempo. They've upped the tempo. Defensively, they've just... That change, I agree with you, Simone Forbes. That change of Ward going to wing, uh, to goal defence rather, and Wilson to wing defence, really has been the difference here for the Sunshine Girls. I'd love to know what the coaches said to the Sunshine Girls in the locker room, because they've they've up the tempo, they the defenders are on fire, and I think Ward is doing a very good job denying uh, the goal attack, giving Shamira a chance to come through for those interceptions. Oh, this is much better patience from the spot proteas and look at that baseline drive from uh, Dalyar swinging the ball across. Oh, look at Jody Ward. Switched on, charged up and fired up. There's just nowhere to go. Olvetun Gubani's face says it all. Thinks she's a bit in disbelief. There's just nowhere to go in that shooting circle. Look at that pressure. Sterling putting pressure. Oh, brilliant pickup from Ward. So what Ward is doing so well, she's really tight on Taliart. She's preventing her from either collecting the center pass or preparing for second phase. That's the advantage of Fowler's height. She's able to get the offensive rebounds. 
And that takes uh, her side there into 43 goals. It's a 16 goal lead. Precision, ball speed. So sharp, so short. Crystal performance here on the attack from the Sunshine Girls. I'd love to see some adjustment in the attack in the South African attack. Recognizing that the Jamaicans, their their game has changed, the tempo has improved. And so really what you want is patience. If it is that you have to make five, six passes to get the ball down, make an adjustment. I don't think they're doing that. I think they're playing just like they did in the second quarter. And clearly that's not working. Uh, for Lenise. I mean, we need some variations. What's happening now uh, uh, is not working, and so you really want to see some change. Yeah, you spot on Simone talking about adjustments in the time style of play, but perhaps in personnel as well, as we see Bongim Somi calling for time. Right. So, absolutely. I was going to say, Crystal needs to make her way into this game. She brings experience, she brings a very different style of play. On the wing attack or center position for the spot press, she's got the height. And for me, she's got um, the discipline, you know, to be able to control that midcourt. And being fresh legs as well, she's going to be able to be the driver and getting that ball into the shooting circle. And also, there's an Ina Marie Fenter sitting on the bench from a shooting perspective. She, for me, is also somebody that can bring something different that circle in the sense of she's tall, she's accurate. She can give you options. Yeah, well, they desperately need a goal. The spot protest. They've only managed to Five sink in one since uh, the end of well, since the beginning of this quarter, compared to 14 of the Sunshine Girls. That's much better passage of play. I really think uh, you know slow them down drastically not being able to find the shooters in that um, first 10 minutes of play. We see there uh, a warning to the center. Uh, deliberate contact is what the umpire is calling her for. And those things you want to be careful. Uh, already the score is going away. Already there, uh, South Africa has only scored two goals. So you want to make sure that you are... Ah, these are the things we want to see. Uh, Nicole just waiting in the wings. Waiting to collect that ball inside the circle. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if then a change will be made in that midcourt from the spa approaches. Shawana getting that warning. Somi just came off. Crystal came on. Oh, this is encouraging though from the spa approaches. Turning that ball in their favor. They've got to make sure they take it through. Oh, but they are denied by Sterling. And Ward, the combination is just on fire. Too good. Too good is uh, Shamila Sterling. Oh, nice take there by Janelle Fowler with the finish. A reward to Shamira and Jody for that awesome defending around the back. This is the thing that uh, makes uh, the Sunshine Girls stand out. They're defending in units. I mean, look at that three second call can only be an outcome of a, you know, a joint effort of all the players on court. Crowd not liking what's happening right now. Oh, Taliart, another take. She's been rock solid defensively as well for the spot proteas. And that's an element of her game she's really worked on. Yes, we know she's dynamic on the attack and shooting, creative. But what sets her apart as a goal attack is that she's strong defensively. And it's like Taliart, oh. unable to convert it. Ladies, I'm sorry, I'm fanning out over here. Did you see that rebounding by Shamira Sterling? I mean, it's, 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 she's phenomenal. You really want to convert on those shots. Oh. You're under the post, your team needs it. So you want to make sure that those shots are some. I mean, just taking at the shooting percentages of the combination of Fowler and Beckman, both sitting at 100%. That's the standard, that's the quality. 
of the Jamaican shooting circle in this match. They haven't put a foot wrong. I'd love to see, I mean, I, wouldn't, I know we're not the coach, but I'd love to see Carla back at goal defense. I mean, when, when she was at defense working with Pumza, we saw the difference. We saw the Jamaicans not being able, especially in that second phase in, on, down the court, not being able to just go as they please. And so I'd really love to see that combination back to see if it is that the Jamaicans really have up the tempo or uh, South Africans are uh, the defending. Yeah, well, certainly we're seeing something different here from Fowler. She's pulling out of that shooting circle. She's in total control. She's dictating play. She's deciding exactly what she wants to do. Obstruction. Just showing her versatility there. I mean, Janelle is a shooter known to stand. But if she needs to move, she will. Yeah, it's great to have that uh, variation in your play. You can never know when it's needed, but for me, the offensive rebounds and uh, just how, you know, she's always uh, switched on for those and positioning herself, more importantly, it just gives you that additional advantage. Let's talk again. I think it was in the second quarter where the spa approaches were playing patiently down court. You know, they were... They treasured the ball. They really were patient, got into the circle's edge. They weren't rushing themselves. At the moment, I think they're putting themselves under tremendous pressure just to quickly get into the shooting circle. So they need to maybe revert back to what worked in that second quarter. But it would be Coach Norma Plummer then. They'll have to remind them that they still have what it takes. They did stay with Jamaica for the first two quarters. And it's just this really bruising third quarter that they will not be happy with. Okay. Yep, they definitely won't be happy with that uh, result. At the end of the third quarter, training by 23 goals of the Spark Proteas. But uh, it certainly won't dampen the spirits of the spectators who have come out uh, to watch and support some of their favorites. There is still one more quarter of action remaining in this encounter, so it's something to definitely look forward to still.
as we're about to get underway with the last 15 minutes of play. It was undoubtedly that uh, third quarter that was bruising for the Spark Proteas. But uh, there is still 15 minutes for them to redeem themselves and hopefully give us uh, a comeback to try and reduce that margin. And the fourth quarter then gets cracking. Observing a few changes already, Zanella being made by both coaches. You're on that centre position for Jamaica, Thompson comes in. Uh, seems to be the only change from the Sunshine Girls, but from the side of the Spa Proteus, Somia makes her way back to centre. In a Marie Fenton goal shooter, Shadeen Fanamava takes the wing defence bit. Trying a different combination here, Coach Norma Plummer looking for solutions. Try and bring this one back. Talking about Norma Plummer, Zanelli, I, I was trying to listen in, in at that on that third quarter break, and Norma mentioned movement. She needs more movement into the circle and stop the standing around the edge. If the ball is not there and if it's not happening, you want to come out and go back in. The feeders into the circle want to be patient. And those two of the things I could catch in this electrifying arena. And it had to do with lip reading as well. But I think she's spot on. And I believe which is why she brought on a new goal shooter. Listen, Simone, your lip reading skills are certainly in point. So I'll give you 10 out of 10 for that because we're definitely seeing the movement and uh, that uh, the coach was asking for from the side and uh, much quicker you know goal in that uh, fourth quarter very different to what we saw in the third quarter so this is much encouraging from the spa proteas and in the marie fenter very capable of giving you that movement shooting circle oh brilliant it's the courage the trust to send that ball straight to Ina Marie Fenter. Oh, look at that smile on her face. You know, she's one of the players that was part of the Spa Proteas in 2019. On her way to the World Cup. Missed that World Cup due to injury. It's good to have her back. And I mean, her first World Cup right here at home, in front of her home crowd. And uh, Zanelia, it is a 24 goal difference, but what can the Spa Proteas do differently in this quarter to try and reduce that margin and perhaps uh, turn things around I mean Sabi it's already better on the attack there's movement the goals are sinking the goals are getting into the shooting circle maybe from a defensive perspective try something different how about jumping the feeder jump the feeder that's distributing that ball into the shooters in 4-4 the score for this quarter already and this is what you expect to see against two world-class teams that's encouraging fourth quarter start from the spa proteas i love the fact that they haven't you know sort of uh thrown in the towel or become despondent they're finding solutions they're working that ball into the shooting circle they're showing character which is very important we see Katie and the Henny in the goalkeeper replacing Shamira Sterling and this is what's so good about this Jamaican team you have the substitutions you have the players that over oh, here we have a contact by Shanice Beckford uh, South Africa the, the attacker should be happy about this and want to make sure that they convert a rare opportunity and so you really want to make sure you convert these yeah, but it is a rare opportunity indeed. But uh, they've got to make it count. And this is the benefit of introducing some fresh legs on the side of the Spa Proteas as well. Crowd appreciating the passage of play. And this is what was missing in the third quarter. always quite interesting Zanella because when we see Ubongu being uh, sandwiched on the wing attack position and coming back on a centre you know but she always just uh, comes back fierce 
more, you know, getting motivated just to make a difference. And already I can see the difference on how she is uh, showing up on that centre position. I'm a firm believer of Bogum Somi is the centre. She's just at home when, she, when she's on that position. She can run on centre all day. So, uh, more substitutions being rolled in by Francis. And it's good. I mean, uh, they've got a reasonable lead at 22 goals up. So, Aiken then comes in. And uh, remember, on. Aiken George is also a world class shooter. So, I really like, I expect her and intensity to remain. Dominant, two dominant tall shooters, two of the tallest shooters in the world. And we see what they've done in the last club league. Very good players. And then uh, Rebecca Robinson then comes in on the goal attack position as well. I mean, how spoiled can one coach be? We talk about uh, all 12 players having the ability to start and finish this match. And we see that now with the additional changes that have been made by Francis. Spoiled for choice. Oh, the Sunshine Girls. They've got height in that shooting circle. They've got so many options. Aiken spoke to it in the pre-match interview. She said, they've got a strong starting seven, but the five that come on, the changes that are made, nothing changes. And more changes to come. Young Crystal Plummer, her, uh, another young star this World Championship, who has come and has shown the world that hey I'm here and I'm here uh, on my debutant world championship so will the momentum change will the intensity of the sunshine girls drop with this new combination fresh legs being introduced will this combination need time to settle in or will they just slot in yes yeah, so all 12 players have played on both teams and it's good. I mean, that's what uh, stage one of the competition is all about. Trying to see who can give you what options. Absolutely. And, and we're still in that stage. And I'm sure Norma is looking and taking notes and seeing what works and what, what doesn't work against this top Jamaican team. Because, of course, as we know, she's going to be going up against uh, the likes of New Zealand or Australia, possibly. So just eight minutes remaining in this encounter. It is the last match of the preliminary stage one before we progress to the second phase of the competition. 20 goals lead for the Sunshine Girls. We're definitely seeing an improvement from the Spark Proteas. They are taking the lead in this quarter, particularly. If we break it down into four quarters. Excellent triangle there, getting uh, Nicole across the circle and inside the circle for a conversion. This is what we want to see. The crowd is involved, the game has improved, it's not a one-sided quarter. And this is really what you expect from, from our spar quarters. Yeah, and the introduction of Ina Marie Fenton, that circle for me. I mean, she's also a player that is just so dynamic. And she's also giving you range, Ina Marie Fenton, giving you mobility. You can see a massive improvement from the attacking front of the Star Proteas. Oh, easy does it is Nicole Dalliard. She's dangerous on the baseline drive. Can't tame her. That's her prime position. And this uh, margin is being reduced by the spot protest. And uh, there's that quarterly breakdown. They are up by four goals in that fourth quarter. Alone. After that uh, bruising the third quarter performance. But uh, it's an encouraging start to this fourth quarter. As the subs keep rolling in from Connie Francis. 
It's uh, Khadija Williams that sits this one out. And the, and the reintroduction of Nicole Dixon Rochester moving to wing attack. This has been the difference in this encounter is that Sunshine Girls will play as many balls as they need to until they find the shooter for that high ball into the circle. And they've also adapted because it's not a fowler that is in the shooting circle anymore. So they've got to play a little bit smarter. Think when to offload that ball into to the shooting circle. But the approach has turned this one then. Oh, just too easy and so simple here for the coaches. Norma would be very happy with this turnaround in this quarter. So far, 12-9 to South Africa. This is what you expect, the movement in the attack. Just what she asked for at that quarter break. The movement in the circle, forcing the Jamaican defenders to mark individually as opposed to the team defense we saw from Ward and Sterling. Yeah, you talk about uh, normal plan, but we saw Tumsani Chauke acknowledging that uh, passage of play from the spot approaches. Just giving them a thumbs up as well. Because uh, this is undoubtedly an encouraging fourth quarter performance uh, from the spot approaches after letting it slip in that uh, third quarter. Oh, there's Fenter. On her own, good vision from Zed Chrysal. But let's talk about that baseline drive with speed from Taliat, just separating the defenders and pulling one of the defenders, and it works. Oh, they are definitely Fenter's supporters in this crowd tonight. That connection, that connection we saw earlier in the third quarter with Shanice Beckford, Khadija Williams and Nicole Dixon Rochester with Janine Fowler. I'm not seeing that here with Edine Thomas, fresh legs with Ramelda Aiken. The pass into the circle, the defenders are giving the attacker something to think about and so they're dropping short. They really want to adjust. Ramelda is a different type, style shooter than Janiel. And so you want to recognize that this is Ramelda, this is her style, and adjust those feeds inside the circle. And also, Simone, you can't feed the ball to a shooter that's sandwiched between two defenders. Then there must be a goal attack that's open that can be the safe option. Absolutely. And the goal attack having must recognize that your goal shooter is doubled. And so it means you have to work the circle. You have to make your C cut, cut to the front, force the defenders to choose. You can shoot. That's why you're on the court. Force them to choose and then get that ball and put up the shot. There, and that's what we like to see. Exactly what Rebecca Robinson just did. Oh my goodness. Francis is not holding back with these subs. But uh, ladies, I think it's uh, safe to say then uh, with just two and a half minutes remaining, it is uh, pretty much done and dusted as far as the result is concerned. Contact with the fans. But uh, what would you draw from uh, the Spark Pro Tears performance uh, today, Zanella? If you had to sum it up in terms of uh, what worked and uh, perhaps areas that they're going to have to fine tune as we move to the second stage of the competition. I think they really had a good start in that first quarter, 16-12. A good start is important and also a good finish because they are leading 17-12 in this fourth quarter. And also maybe just trusting their own processes when it comes to the attack. At times they were caught static and the, they were really being put under pressure. They couldn't adapt to the defensive pressure that the Sunshine Girls were putting up. At the moment, they're letting that ball go. They're playing with confidence. And uh, maybe also fresh legs. When, when your preferred combination is not working, quickly making those substitutions. 
I mean, think Ina Marie Fenter and the introduction of Taliat in that second quarter, those were good changes for the Spa Proteus. Yeah, it certainly were good changes. And given uh, Norma Plum, food for thought going into the rest of the competition and uh, for you Simone what is it uh, that stood out for you as far as the Sunshine Girls performance is concerned? Uh, so for me it was just in the team play in the third quarter the defenders locking down the shooting circle getting those interceptions the switch from Ward Ward and Wilson wing defense wing, wing defense goal defense showed dividend it, it, they were working more as a team they looked freer they looked more connected in that defensive area and so they got the interceptions and then the through court play for the Jamaicans into the goal circle and converting I mean the attack opened up in the third quarter I was wondering what was happening but I know South Africa is a different kind of a different team than they, the two teams they played over the last two days and so they opened up in the third quarter moving the ball down the circle switching changing the pass Janil came alive Shanice Beckford and so for me the attackers were on fire and that's what you expect from the Jamaicans that's what won them the silver medal last year at the Commonwealth Games semi so uh, there you have it uh, from both ladies in terms of what we saw but uh, the clock is ticking away as we're potentially looking for one more goal from the Spa Proteus the penalty was called and Daliat does a splendid job by finishing off a strong. They may not get the result, uh, but uh, there's certainly confidence from the Spa Proteus having won that fourth and final quarter and reducing the margin. So there's the result at the end of the match. 67 for the Jamaican Sunshine Girls versus a 49 of the Spa Proteus. It is the 2023 Netball World Cup and oh my goodness, the netball that we saw here today as the Spa Proteas took on Jamaica. We can see that the ladies aren't of course happy because sadly they went down to a team that has been showing that they are getting stronger and stronger over the last couple of years. Ladies, what do we make of this? Alsha, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, no, obviously we're very disappointed in the result, mm. but um, I'm very pleased to say that you know, it was good to see how we keep on fighting and, uh, and that, that's one positive for me. You know, at one stage we were trailing by 23 and we managed to bring it down to 18. Yeah. So, so that's really important. And another good thing is there's a lot of players that took the court tonight and they had the opportunity to gain some experience against one of the top teams in the world. Let's mm. not underestimate that. Taking nothing away from South Africa, but um, you know, we might potentially look at a, a team that might be contesting into a final of a World Cup. Not that it's over for us, there's yeah. still a lot to play for. But I mean, let's, we also need to be big enough to say well done to Jamaica. They did a, a complete performance out there. Yeah. And that third quarter was just absolutely breathtaking. They did a stellar job, but as you said, it does not take away from the Spa Pro Tears. They also did such a great one. We're coming to you live from the CTICC and the Mother City, and we can hear the roaring of the crowd just congratulating the ladies for how they did try. China, yes. what could we have done different? With that being said, I see us going to uh, some interviews in a little bit. But what do you think we could have done differently? Um, 
Definitely not the results we wanted, mm. uh, but I think what we could have really changed is maybe less changes. Just let the girls just gel, work it out, grind it out to the end. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying we should have stuck to the seven. I think the first half of the match, um, the strategic changes that happened um, were well called. And then in the second half, I think we should have st stuck to what we had. Yeah. Um, just let the girls um, grow it out, fight it out, and yeah. Yeah, and I also, of course, look at the fact that we were only six goals difference when we were going into the our half. And then, all of a sudden, we find ourselves 18 goals apart at the end of the match. Coach, what do you make of this? Where do you think we could have changed things to possibly be even just a little bit closer to them? Yeah, look, uh, netball is a game of 60 minutes, not 30 minutes. You mm. know, and that, uh, it seems like, uh, you know, I, I always say you never know until you're in that position how long is 60 minutes and how short is 60 minutes yeah. to pull it back. Um, but, but yeah, I, I agree with Gina. I think the changes that we made were maybe, you know, disrupting our rhythm a, uh, um, a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you know, to see Jamaica just run their bench off the side wasn't <gasps> that pleasing. Yeah. And it took oh. them some time to settle down. And um, in that time, our players managed to get on top of them and turn a few. Mm, but, yes. but at the end of the day, you know, we really struggled through that middle to get that ball through. That yeah. pushed us really wide. We, had, we were forced to go in long. We know what's the danger that Sterling had at the back, and I thought that change between the wing defence, goal defence for Jamaica at, at half time just worked yeah. perfectly for them. Yes, but let us go and see what is happening courtside right about now because we do have some interviews indeed. We're chatting to the captains. Um, we know what we had to do. We knew that South Africa was going to come out hard at us, but um, yeah, we just kept composed and made sure we did the job. Everything connected for you in that third quarter defensively. Was that the game plan from the start? Um, definitely. We have amazing defenders. I mean, they went out there and they did their job and that was really good. A lot of netball still to play in this World Cup. Good luck. Thank you. Now joined by winning, losing captain this time around, but winning captain of our hearts. Bongi and Somi, not the result we hoped for. Oh, definitely. We actually came here knowing exactly that this, the Jamaicans are going to come hard. They're actually really a great side. We really wanted to put out some great performances, which I think first half we probably did. I think we really lose, lost concentration on the third, where we started to pick it up in the last quarter, but a bit too late. So there's a lot of learnings, a lot of great things as well. So tournament doesn't end today. We'll see how far we can go. You're very right. Another stage to play. Are you ready for it? Oh, definitely. We have to look forward to, you know, what's next from this. I'm really pleased, you know, for the goal. So finishing really strong. This is how we are about, and sometimes we really just need to play for our pride. Thank you, Bongi. Thank you. Now joined by a player of the match, Jody Ann Ward. That change in the third quarter from you moving from wing defence to goal defence, that was the big impact that Jamaica needed. Yes, our defence is very versatile and we're very grateful for that. Um, we knew that South Africa would be a game that we would have to um, change up what we do from the start because we knew that they would... Um, they would have different combinations to combat what we do, so we just had to change it up, and I thought we did that very well. well. Speaking about combinations, you had a run of all the players in that fourth quarter. What did that mean to the team? We wanted to just get fresh legs out there. We have the depth in our team, and I thought we utilized um, all 12 players well today. So yeah, we, we, went, we wanted to get everyone on court, and we did that very well. And came on court seamlessly so that was good <laughs> thank you so much thank you just like Elsha said you know we can't help but congratulate Jamaica they did a stellar job clinical in every sense of the word I, like I also said they did not have to put their whole bench on at the end I think that was a little bit hurtful to us however with that being said I still think we did fight up until the end seeing such a great improvement even into the last quarter I do know as well that we do have the stats for us in terms of full time it looks like uh, when we look at our shooting it did get a little bit better from what we saw in the first quarter which is really great uh, if we look at our turnovers 20 to 19. I think a lot of those happened in the fourth quarter. Elsha, speak to us about this. Yeah, no, I think, you know, the game is played in possession and you could see that we only handled 46% of the possession, mm. you know, so they had the ball 8% more than us. And, you know, you can see that in the score line. So the stats really reflect what happened at the score at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, on both sides, very expensive game, lots of contacts, lots of obstructions, but you expect that from a close game like this. But I would really like us to be see that we can become more clinical. We can't see the unforced errors there, but I think at the, today what, caused, caused, what really cost us really uh, was our unforced errors. You know, mm. and I say pressure is not something you see; it's something you feel, and that often reflects in your unforced errors. 
and today it shows for us as well, showed for us as well. 100%. I genuinely wish that we would have possibly even had just a few less errors, particularly in the first quarter for me. But like we said, they were finding their feet. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we look at our pool standings now, I know that we did not want to finish second because it did mean that we we're possibly going to be facing some of the most difficult teams. Gina, what do you make of these standings that we see right in front of us? I mean, at the end of the day, um, being second is not so bad because we go into a new pool. Yes. All, all three of us are going to play each other again. Um, while the, the team are um, in another pool. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives us another chance. I, I, I believe that the tournament starts again tomorrow. Yes. Um, so it's all up to us and our mindset as, as a team to decide to let it go. You win some, you lose some. It's mm -hmm. part of the game. But more importantly is what we're going to do moving from here on out. 100%. And as our trusted analysts, ladies, am I right to say it's not over yet? You know, we don't have to give up necessarily. No, it's not over yet. Uh, our first game now will be Trinidad and Tobago. We, go, we will now become G2 in, yes. our, in our pool. We take on Trinidad and Tobago and after that we need to, to beat, we will beat them. I'm yes. sure we will beat yes. them. Yes. And then we're going to take on Uganda and after that New Zealand. So mm. if we can beat New Zealand, uh, we will be in the semis and then obviously we need to beat uh, Jim, uh, Uganda as well. So yeah. two tough games. It's, it's, a, it's a tough road for us ahead, but it's definitely not over. over. And you know, it's just Human beings playing a game, two legs, two feet, one 100%. head, one ball, same rules. Uh, and sport, you know, I said it right at the beginning, you need a little bit of luck as well. Um, and then we're in it. So we're definitely not out of it. Hopefully this luck will indeed be with us tomorrow when we take on yet another team. Do not go anywhere. We continue chatting about the Jamaica versus South Africa match in the 2023 Nepal World Cup. Stick around.